Hey guys, just got off work. Um, oh man, I had a double shift tonight. I talked to one of my um, sisters in Christ, Angela. She knew about it. I talked to her the day before, but I, it was a long day. I'm gonna say enough about that. But um, as far as um, what we look to for salvation, whether we're in fear, or doubts, or anything, we don't look to ourselves for assurance. Our our vision, our Look should be to the Lord for our assurance. We never look to our, our downfalls, our the doubts, our fears, or anything. We look to the cross. That's where we find. We don't look to ourselves for salvation. You're helpless. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. Nothing. We just look to the cross. That's all you do. When you have accepted Christ, and that is believing, accepting is believing. In your own heart and on your own way but believing that the true gospel that the lord jesus christ that did die for your sins personally he died for your sins was buried and rose again that jesus is who we put our trust in that's the only god that gives eternal life there's no buddha there's no um harry krishna or a new age thing that can't ever give you that you're a little i mean whatever that might be there's only one true God, and he's so gracious and loving. That's how you know he's true. The real God has true wisdom and knows how to save his uh, people and his creatures from something that they cannot do for themselves. That's a true, living, wonderful God we have, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We look to him for our assurance, not to ourselves, how we feel, whether we feel saved or not. We, we don't look to ourselves for assurance of salvation. Do you understand that? You look to him. It's not you you're trusting on, you're trusting on him. Not your faith. Your faith is, you're looking to him. It's just a glance, a, just one glance. One glance is magnificent and powerful. God knows when you look to him for salvation, and you look and you know you've heard the word of God you've heard the word of God the gospel of your salvation the gospel of your salvation that yes Lord I believe that you did die for my sins the true gospel that gospel not Buddha not faith in your faith not whether I do I believe hard enough or whether I don't know um, Maybe I need to do something to, uh, to help God with this. No, it's just looking. It's looking to the cross that saves. Nothing more, nothing less. Friends, we don't look to ourselves for assurance, even in our doubts, our fears. We look to the cross for assurance. Nothing else. Don't quit looking at yourself. Just look to him. Look to him. He's good for his word. Trust him at his word. He's good for it. And if you believed, if you just had a faith of a mustard seed, if you just, Lord, yes, I believe, and you believed on the gospel, the true gospel, the power of God is in the gospel. That is the power of God. If you truly believed the gospel, what Jesus did for you, meaning you believe, you look to him for it. assurance, not yourself, not how you feel. You're saved if you look to him for it and believed. It's simple, yes, Lord, I believe. It is that. And there you go. You're good to go. I, mean, I, I praise the Lord today that, that he would give you a special assurance in your heart of who you are and then who you belong to. You belong to him if you placed your trust and you just believe on him. It is a one-time thing. It ain't a continual maintenance job, if you will. It's a one-time thing, and thank God it is, because I tell you, uh, most of us would lose our salvation the next day, if that was true, you know. We're very forgetful people. We forget very easily, and um, that's the whole thing of, of growing in grace learning who you are in Christ now. It ain't that um, 
your little fears or this thing's going to uh, annihilate the idea that you're saved or God's uh, forgotten you because you have these little fears and doubts. God has not let you go. You just need to renew your mind. And um, it's it's not that hard. It just it, it does take effort to renew your mind daily. Um, I pray that you'd get a good pastor teacher if you can find one. <laughs> I mean, we can't do this on our own. That's why the gifts are given. We got pastors, teachers, the apostles and the prophets. You know, we have the canon of scripture now. We don't need those guys anymore. Thank God for them. But all we have really now is pastor, teachers, and evangelists, which, uh, you know, evangelists, I guess they could be teachers if they have that call later on, you know, to get the the people they got saved. But really the evangelist's job, and I will agree with uh, my pastor on this, is that the real true calling of an evangelist is to win people to Christ and preach the gospel. You know, blessed are the men's feet, you know, that they preach the true Christ, the gospel, the free gift of salvation. But the pastor teacher's job is to uh, feed the flock. It is. But you need a good pastor teacher. You may, might find it online. You know, I've, I've made suggestions, but hey, you got Ralph Hankey Arnold. You can grow in grace there, but um, there's a lot more. Pastor John Ritchie, I, I mentioned that, and I'm sure there's more, but it's got to be grace teachers, guys, okay? Guys and girls. But, um, but we look to the cross for uh, assurance. We don't look to ourselves. We fail. Our, our emotions and our thoughts even flow. It goes like, it's like a wave sometimes. But you get stabilized as you grow and have your mind fixed on the word of God and his promises. You get better at it. It's like lifting a weight. I don't know how else to say it than that. It just, does it get easier? Sometimes it gets really intense. Attacks of the devil, I mean, but... I don't feel like I'm being, I, I don't know if I'm much of a threat yet, but you get, we think we're being uh, hit with real attacks. You have no idea what you're talking about. You ain't being attacked. You might have some mental things, but a real attack of the, of the devil, a lot of us and most of us ain't even, don't even know what that means, to be honest with you. You're not grown that much. You're probably not, I'm not trying to, put any of you down I love you but I'm just saying be honest let's be honest with each other we're probably not that much of a threat to the devil honestly right now I mean you could you know you know we're not a Paul and you know might have mental things but a lot of us have a roof overhead we we're not suffering we have a car probably hey you, you have a bicycle and you got feet to walk you're not doing so bad you're really not you got a lot to be thankful for but as far as real attacks of the devil, I mean, I don't know. Maybe but the thing is, keep in the Word of God, but it all is here. If you're being attacked, it's here to keep you nullified, to keep you down. But God's grace is with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, um, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But, um, yeah, being really attacked, yeah, mentally, but you're not being a Right where we live, and if you're living in America, you're probably not really being attacked that much mentally. You might even have too much time on your hands. I don't know. I don't know what the thing might be. Chemical imbalance. But, you know, th these are things that um, I think about. <laughs> but God's grace is uh, sufficient. His grace is sufficient in all things. Just keep in remembrance of one thing that uh, he loves you, and he ain't going nowhere. You know, he's not going nowhere. If you trust on him, you look to him for salvation plus nothing else, you're just looking. You're done. You're good. Good to go. So rest and be assured that if you believe truly on the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work, you're good to go. No worry. You're worrying for nothing, really. You're just uh, enough anyway. I'm enough to talk, and I'm just yapping now. But God bless you. I love you guys. Y'all are awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.